welcome to Eki Magazine, India's largest solar media. Joining us today is Mr. Prashant Mathur, CEO of Satvik Group. Welcome to the channel, sir. My question to you before we start the interview: Can you tell us something about your company? Please tell us. Yeah, so we are Satvik Green Energy. Uh, we have been in the solar manufacturing business for six years now, and uh, our manufacturing currently is based in Ambala. Which is um, a great award where we do body cost and all of this kind of half cut curves and all of this kind of And um, apart from that, we are also coming up with a 1.2 gigawatt uh, greenfield project in Gandhiram, Gujarat. So by end of this financial year, we will be a 2 gigawatt uh, model manufacturer. So that will be your manufacturing capacity? Yes, so our manufacturing capacity will be that's, that's very promising. My question to you is, what are your expansion plans from now? Yeah, so the, the facility which we have taken in Gandhidam, uh, Gujarat is a 52 acre land, uh, which, which will be an integrated complex uh, for cell and module manufacturing, starting obviously from modules. Um, as I said, 1.2 gigawatt, and then cell, uh, cell manufacturing will add in. And apart from that, uh, we also want to keep on expanding there. Um, this capacity will go up to 5 gigawatt. And along with that, we want to get into uh, lithium and batteries and EVs. So that is also part of uh, our plan in the same complex. So for solar module manufacturers like yourself, what kind of scope does Indian market provide? So as you see, India, um, I I feel that India has kind of just started because you know, we have so much of potential and so much of demand uh, for uh, renewable energy because we have more than 370 days. Uh, we have a population. Uh, we have been you know focused more on thermal power till now. Six only six percent of uh, our energy comes from from solar, though we have so many sunny days, so I think the potential is very high and uh, um, this from 8 to 10 gigawatt which we have been doing till now, I think the potential um, is to reach about 25 to 30 gigawatt every year and uh, you know, there is no doubt in our mind that uh, India is going to be leading, leading the solar uh, manufacturing as well as generating batteries globally. Um, as you know, even our uh, Honorable Prime Minister has given us uh, 2022 uh, vision of uh, 100 gigawatt of solar and 175 gigawatt of renewable energy. But now, which has been revised to 450 gigawatt of renewable energy, so a lion's share of that will be solar uh, by 2030. So I think a lot of uh, lot of potential and a lot of uh, uh, heavy demand we will be seeing in the coming years. Do you think that the COP commitment that Narendra Modi did uh, COP 20, during COP26 would uh, further enhance this capacity, help uh, with the growth of solar? Obviously, if we have to become a net carbon uh, zero emitting country, um, there is no doubt that uh, most of it has and come from uh, focus on renewable energy and uh, the targets are only going to get enhanced because currently if we see per capita power consumption in India is very low as compared to global. So we have the potential to go um, you know, at least to five or six times than what uh, we have been consuming. So um, one is obviously increasing the share of renewable energy in the in the pie, but the pie itself is going to become four or five times bigger as as the country develops and as the middle class becomes more and more affluent. So, you know, and this, what would this, be the has to, this has to go beyond 450 gigawatt. Okay. What will be the challenges in the Indian market? The challenges in the Indian market, is, there's no doubt, no dearth of challenges actually. I think the biggest challenge till now has been that uh, the policy has not been very clear. I think government uh, was not very focused uh, on sorting out the policy um, 
policy paralysis, I would say, that was happening. So, the SGD came in, it didn't solve the problem, rather it enhanced the problem. So now we are looking at uh, you know basic custom duty getting implemented, so that manufacturing can come in, and the local manufacturers would scale up to the size of what China manufacturing is. So do you think that BCD implementation of BCD will further enhance the uh, manufacturing in India? Obviously, it does. It does gives uh, the confidence uh, to the manufacturers that uh, the government is is serious about. Uh, keeping manufacturing in India. So far we have been importing most of the components from China. So basically we were we were uh, converting ourselves to renewable energy at the cost of uh, giving benefit to China. But uh, apart from BCD, I think PLI scheme is also uh, a very good step which the government has taken. And uh, this will help uh, in, you know backward integration and Poly silicon manufacturing at least has to come in India in a big way because uh, ultimately that's the starting block for the solar manufacturing. And uh, if poly silicon uh, comes and a lot of cell and wafer manufacturing capacities comes, then India will actually become an arc for India. Do you have any plans of backward integration? Yes, I said uh, uh, we are uh, getting into cells, uh, cell manufacturing. And then we are also looking at uh, you know, backward uh, to inward level. Obviously, polysilicon is also uh, possible, but we need to have a good partner in place, which we are also looking at. To conclude, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, no, uh, you know, we are at Intersolar and we are very happy to be here. It's, it's uh, surprisingly a very busy and a good show. And, uh, Gandhinagar was a, a good uh, location because you know, so far all these exhibitions have been uh, in Delhi or in, in metro cities. So I think Gujarat uh, because of... Uh, Breath of fresh air, quite literally. Uh, uh, at least it's, it's different. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.